In this video, we'll review inverse functions. To begin, we'll go over what are inverse functions, followed by how to determine if two functions are inverses, then we'll look at how to graph inverses, and lastly, we'll look at how to determine an inverse of a function algebraically. To begin, let's look at a definition. Two functions are inverse functions if the functions undo each other. The notation we'll use is here. If you're given original function f of x, the inverse would be that f with a negative one exponent, x. It's the inverse of f of x. Let's look at some properties of inverses also. To begin, like we said before, two functions are inverses if they undo each other. That means if you substitute the inverse into the original function, you should get x, meaning the original input. Or if you take and substitute the original function into its inverse function, again you should get x. The functions undo each other, and you're left with the original input. In contextual problems, or word problems, inverse function will provide a different perspective of the same problem. For instance, if we were looking at the cost of buying pencils, and we were to set up a problem like C of P equals, for instance, let's say the boxes were two bucks a piece plus ten dollars shipping, instead of saying C of P equals two P plus ten, the inverse would be to look at it from another perspective. How many pencils could you get for the cost? And that would be P of C. Now it's the same problem, but again look at it from a different perspective. Additionally, the domain of an original function becomes the range of its inverse, and the range of the original function becomes the domain of the inverse. This is because the inputs and outputs are switched. What was the set of x becomes y for the function, or the inverse function, and what was originally y becomes the x for the inverse. Inputs and outputs are switched. And then lastly, if we approach it from a transformational uh, perspective, a inverse is basically a reflection over the line y equals x. And that helps us when we're looking at it um, from a graphing point. Now I've got two functions here, and we're going to look at some composition functions. We've got the original function f of x equals 2x minus 12, and we have a second function g of x equals half x plus 6. We're going to determine first off what f of g of x is, and then secondly, what g of f of x is. Now for the first one, when you see f of g of x, it means you're taking the g of x and you're substituting it into the other function f of x. To do this, we'll take the g of x as half x plus 6 and substitute it into the x, where f of x equals 2x minus 12. It'll look like this. When you substitute, make sure you put it in parentheses. We have a 2 in front of our parentheses, so we'll distribute. 2 times half x is just 1x, and 2 times 6 is 12. We're left with x plus 12 minus 12. Combining like terms, the 12 and the negative 12 are going to cancel, and we're left with f of g of x equals just x. For the second one, now we have g of f of x, which means we're going to take the f of x's, 2x minus 12, and we'll substitute that where x is, and g of x equals half x plus 6. Again, use parentheses, and it should look like this. g of f of x equals half times the quantity 2x minus 12, and then plus 6. Distribute half of 2x is 1x, half of negative 12 is negative 6, and we still have that plus 6. Again, we'll combine like terms, and we get g of f of x equals just x. Now, when I see the answers come out like this, it kind of tells me something about the inverses. In part c, we're asked, are they inverse functions? And if I go back to what we looked at before, if the functions undo each other, they're inverses. The f of g of x equals x, and the g of f of x equals x. Both functions undo each other, and you get back the original input, x. So yes, these are inverse functions, and the reason I know is the functions undo each other, meaning f of g of x is x, and so is g of f of x equal to x. Both functions have to undo each other. Now I'm going to put up another set of examples, and I'd like for you to try working through these on your own. Pause the video, work them out, and resume when you're ready. I'll give you a minute. All right, hopefully you had a chance to work it out. For f of g of x, we're going to take g of x as negative quarter x plus 2, and we'll substitute where x is, and f of x equals negative 4x minus 8. Distributing negative 4 times negative 1 fourth x would be just 1x. Negative 4 times 2 would be negative 8. So we get x 
minus 8, minus another 8. Now this time the 8s will not cancel. Instead you get f of g of x equals x minus 16. In g of f of x, we're going to substitute f of x as negative 4x minus 8, where x is for the g of x equals negative quarter x plus 2. Distributing, we get g of f of x equals x plus 2 plus 2, or g of f of x equals x plus 4. To decide if they're inverses, I've got to look at what happens when we do the composition functions. f of g of x does not give me the original input. I do not get just x. Instead, I get x minus 16. And for g of f of x, I don't get x. Instead, I get x plus 4, which tells me these are not inverse functions. The two do not undo each other. And again, the reason is the f of g of x and the g of f of x are both not equal to x. All right, that's how you determine given the two equations whether they're inverses. Do they undo each other? Now, let's turn our attention to some graphs. We're going to take this graph of f of x, this parabola here, and we're going to find its inverse. Now, I know that in an inverse function, the inputs and outputs switch. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to list what each coordinate that I've got listed for those nice points in f of x are, and I'll find its inverse. I'll switch the inputs. x and y will switch. So for instance, set your graph up, and on this first one, that coordinate on the upper left-hand corner is negative 5, 4. The inverse of that would be to switch the inputs and outputs, which means to take the point 4, negative 5. So I'm going to go to my other graph, and I'm going to plot where 4, negative 5 is. So I go over 4 and down 5. It's right here. I'll identify the next point, which is negative 3, negative 2, and I'll find its inverse. The inverse of negative 3, negative 2, switch the input and output, would be negative 2, negative 3. And I'll continue along this fashion. Negative 1, negative 4 becomes negative 4, negative 1. The 1, negative 2 becomes negative 2, 1. And the last one, this 3, 4, becomes 4, 3. Now I can see the parabola appears to be turned sideways. I'll connect it, and there's my inverse. Now in this case, the inverse is not a function because it doesn't have that one-to-one -one relationship. There is not one output for every input. So in this case, the inverse would not be considered a function. Now I'm going to put up another example, and I'd like for you to try this one. Given this graph, find its inverse. You might want to make a sketch, plot the points, make sure you can do it, and then resume the video. I'll give you a second to try it. All right, hopefully we've had a chance to work this one out. We're going to again identify every point that we've got nice clean coordinates for, starting with this negative 4, 4 point. The inverse of that would be 4, negative 4, so I'll go 4 to the right and down 4. The next one is negative 3, 2, which becomes 2, negative 3. Next one is the negative 2, 1, which becomes 1, negative 2. And then continue this idea, this one has a factor of 1 half, so this next one's going to be negative 1, 1 half, which becomes 1 half, negative 1. And then lastly, 0, 1 fourth becomes 1 fourth, 0 and I can see the shape of this new graph. It's going to go like that. In this case, now it is um, a function. Both the original function and the inverse are functions here. All right, lastly, we're going to look at how to determine the inverse algebraically. To do this, we're going to solve for the other variable, isolate it, and then once we have the other variable isolated, we'll switch the input and output. So to begin, if I have f of x equals 2x minus 20, I want to get the x isolated. I want to get x by itself. So I'll undo the function. Right now this is 2 times x, and then subtract 20. To do the inverse, I'm going to use the order of operations in reverse order. So I'm going to start by moving the 20, in which case I get f of x plus 20 equals 2x. I'll then divide by 2, and I get the 1 half f of x plus 20 over 2, which is 10, equals x. Now that the x is by itself, I can write the inverse. So instead of saying x equals half of f of x plus 10, I can say the inverse of f of x equals a half x plus 10. When I switch the variables, I make it the inverse function. Why don't you try the other two, and when you're ready, resume the video and check your answers. For problem number two, we're going to start by saying, well, right now we have f of x equals x squared minus 8. So I'm going to start by moving the 8. I get f of x plus 8 equals x squared. To undo a squaring, you take the square root. 
Now to keep this a function, I'm going to take just the positive root. Now I know that the square of a square root really should be a plus minus, but this wouldn't be a function anymore. So I'm going to restrict it by saying I'm just going to take the positive root of f of x plus 8. Now that the x is by itself, it's isolated, I can write the inverse function. The inverse is equal to the square root of x plus 8. Now for the last one, I've got f of x equals 3 raised to the x power minus 2. Start by undoing the 2, so you get f of x plus 2 equals 3 to the x. Now to undo an exponential function, this is that new type. This is the log. We're going to take the log of this in order to be able to get the inverse. Now when you're doing this, the exponential and the log will share the same base. Right now my exponential has a base of 3, which means my log is also going to be a base of 3. So I get log base 3 of f of x plus 2 equals x. Now that my x is isolated, I can switch it and write the inverse. So the inverse becomes log base 3 of x plus 2. Alright, I hope this video helped you to understand inverses, and thank you for watching.